Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm filming like a makeup starter kit and I thought that would be a fantastic video to kind of do this week. I feel like when you're going to be taking more photos in the summer, you want to look half decent. So this is when a lot of us start to get into makeup, especially because you've got more time. So you start watching YouTube videos on makeup. That's how I got into makeup. So I thought I would do like a drugstore starter kit. This is mostly UK. Pretty sure you can get like most of this across the pond in the US. However, this is stuff that you can get mostly like Superdrug, one products from Amazon, Boots, that kind of thing. And they're all affordable. So I thought I would include this for you guys so, so that you can see what I love. Um, I'm gonna include like a couple from each, possibly, from like each section foundation concealer because actually, I think if you're a deeper skin tone or you're a different skin type, then that makes a difference. Obviously, a lot of the stuff that is coming from me is advice for pale people um, because I am super ghostly. However, so if you like this video, then please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel before you leave. And if you press that notification bell, you'll be notified every time I upload. So the first thing I want to talk about is foundation mixes. So I have the Revolution Pro Whitening Drops. Revolution are really good for doing things that make your like foundation more match your undertone. And like if you're pale or deep, they have like deepening drops, I think. Um, if not, the Body Shop have some decent deepening drops as well. Um, but to me, they're going to make you match your foundation. If you're going abroad and you have like fake tan on in your fake tan phase in the week, you can bring one foundation and then you can bring lightening drops or darkening drops to make it match you. That way you're not bringing four or five different foundations that you want to match you throughout the like two weeks or whatever that you're away. So to me, that is a way of getting around it. And it makes foundations match you, especially if you find that you have a formula that you absolutely love, but the shade's just not quite right. I find that these are perfect and these are definitely ones that I recommend. You can see I've used a lot of it. I didn't use it in the video just because I could get this foundation to mostly match. So foundation wise, there are a couple and I'll tell you why there are a couple. Um, I think it really depends on what you're looking for. So I absolutely love this CYO Long Lasting Life Proof Foundation. This is like my second bottle that I've gone through. Um, and this is beautiful and smooth. It has a really nice neutral undertone, which I find works really well. However, this doesn't have the most fantastic shade range, which is why I would say if you are of like a deeper skin tone or anything from like light to remotely medium, I think you are gonna have a bit more trouble. This foundation, however, is the L'Oreal Infallible 24 Hour Fresh Wear. I have seen videos for people with like oily skin that love this, combination skin that love this. I have dry skin and I absolutely love this. This has like many, many more shades. So you are likely to be able to find a shade that works for you. I have the shade 215. This is the one that I used in the video and I used it in the video because to be honest, I think this is gonna be your best bet for most of you just because it's gonna suit most skin types and it has more shades available. So concealers, again, I have two. I have the L'Oreal Infallible more than concealer and to me this one I use for lightening just because I did pick up the lightest shade 320 porcelain and it is a little bit pale um, and that is something to keep in mind as well if you find a formula of concealer that works for you then getting one that is say lighter or darker if you cannot find one that matches you. This is a decent concealer on its own however it is too pale however my absolute like favourite to start with I would say that would suit most skin tones um, not quite mine, it's a bit dark for me, is you can see it's rubbed off to like madness. It's the Collection Lasting Perfection Concealer. Now this is a shade fair, they do have extra fair. They have about four or five shades, so it's not the most fantastic shade range. Again, like the CYO, however, I find that it's the most crease proof concealer that I have. I mean, I have some natural under eye creases that you can see. However, when you pull it down, you can't see any like creases then. And to me, that's what matters. That's where you can tell if your concealer is performing well. And this is super cheap. This is super affordable, as is this. They're both something I would recommend. So to set your concealer, I have a couple of powders in mind for your pale skin gals. This is good. However, they do have other colours that I think would work for anyone that has like a deeper skin tone or doesn't want like a translucent powder. You can see I've used nearly all of it. This is a Maybelline Fit Me Matte and Polis powder. You can get the loose one um, overseas. However, you can only get the pressed one here. This is fantastic to me to just set the under eyes. I don't use it much on the rest of my face because I find that it mattifies quite a bit, but I want that on my under eyes. I want like matte, smooth under eyes. So this is absolutely fantastic. It does have a bit of a brightening when it's like translucent. So that's something to be aware of that wouldn't work on deeper skin tones. However, I also think that the Coty Airspun Powder, I find this deepens up my makeup just a touch. 
if I'm just setting my face, I will only set my face with this because I find that it just like makes my under eyes match the rest of my face if I go with this on my under eyes. But this is fantastic for setting the cheeks. However, if you only want one, then I would say go for this one just because you're not going to lose that brightness that you get on your under eyes with this one. So for brows, I went in with like an eyeshadow palette just because that's what I use for my brows. This was like four pounds. This was the Revolution Redemption palette. I like, I lost the front, but like you can still see on the back. This is something that I've had since I think I started my channel. And I use this, like this shade, you can see I've hit pan like so much for my brows. I find it's the most easy thing actually going in with a powder rather than a pencil or a pomade. So that is something I would definitely recommend if you have something that is gonna match and work for you. And if you don't, then you can also kind of tint your brow hairs with a brow gel. This is the L'Oreal Brow Artist Plumper in medium dark. I always recommend a brow gel, especially when you're gonna use a powder because powders can go everywhere. You are filling in your brows. You're not necessarily gonna be creating brow hairs with this. So this is gonna set your eyebrows in place and stop them from looking just like a bit of a powdery or natural mess. And I find that if you have like clumps of powder that you just cannot get to move, that brow gels are really good for just making it look a lot more natural and just looking much more fresh. So the next thing I'm gonna talk about is kind of bronzer contour because I feel like you could make this palette work for both. So this is Revolution Pro HD Powder Contour in light medium. Now I have to use light medium because of how pale I am. Um, and the shade that I dip into the most is this one. You could probably use this for powder if that's what you wanted. Or if you are a bit more like deep, you could use these ones. Um, it is really gorgeous, really blendable. I feel like if you have a habit of like going overboard, like it's not too easy to do that. I feel like you have to quite like powder the product on. I feel like it's quite easy to start, build up, get what you want and then carry on building up. And I think this is really good for that, especially when you're just starting contour. Like I, I can barely contour, like it's a mess and a half. However, I feel like this palette is really good for it just because you can start building and blending and building and blending, which I think is really important when you're just starting out. And it is really affordable as well. So my absolute favorite blush, like drugstore high end, like of all time is the Milani Baked Blush in Luminoso. This is just so blendable. It's a really good shade for like a lot of skin types. There are a few other shades in this formula. It's a baked blush and it just blends so beautifully. Like you can build it up so that you don't like look too clown to begin with. I quite like to look a little bit clown. However, you don't have to do that if that's what you want. Like it just it is so pretty and it does have a little bit of a glow, which I quite like. So if you decided you didn't want highlight and you just wanted a bit more of like a natural glow, this would work for you. It's so beautiful and it is super affordable. Now for highlight, I have the Soph X Revolution 8 Pan Highlight Palette. So this palette is definitely made for more like light to medium skin tones. As you can see, the shades that I've dipped into the most, you can see if I kind of put it on the angle, is these two shades. They are absolutely beautiful. I do like to mix these two shades, those two shades, like those two shades, like they are beautiful and you can build them up. If you go in lightly, you can get like a nice subtle glow and then you can build it up to a really nice, super glowy look, which I absolutely love. And it doesn't look glittery. And that's one of the things that I think depending on what you're looking for, is worth watching out for. There are some highlights that are a bit more glittery, some that are like more metallic and some that are a bit like more like wet looking and reflective. And actually, like I don't mind a bit of a glittery highlight, but most of us kind of want a reflective highlight. And you have that option here, especially if you're not sure what shade to go for, but you're more of like a light to medium skin type. Getting a highlight palette with all these different colours is going to enable you to kind of make your own kind of custom shade by mixing colours and I absolutely love that. Mascara wise I do not have my favourite affordable mascara because it dried out and I had to get rid of it and haven't had a chance to repurchase because I've got so many high ends that I'm trying to get through. Um, it's the Maybelline Miss Baby Roll mascara and it gives you such a volume which I absolutely love. Like although sometimes I do like a wispy look I do love the Maybelline one if you like a lot more volume. The Miss Baby Roll is really nice and it lasted for ages. There's a good amount of product in there and the brush is really easy to use and I think that's something that you have to be aware of that if you're not into it that much, if you're not used to using mascara, having a huge, huge brush that's super fluffy is what it's gonna give you all like your transfer up here. I mean, transfer up here can be managed. However, up here, it's just a bit of a mess. So 
I do really like that because I don't find I have much of a problem with transfer with that mascara. It looks lovely and lasts all day. For an affordable eyeshadow palette, I do recommend the Milani Most Love Mattes. It is an entirely matte palette, but then if you end up with like a highlight palette, you can use that as your shimmers. It is just so lovely and it can give you a lot of different looks. There are 16 shadows here. You can see that you'll get like a more like warm toned look, more like your nudie browns and like all like pinky purples so pretty and it's got like the mirror as you can see in the top for traveling this is super affordable and oh my god the blendability like it is such a good product i absolutely love the formula of these like it competes with some of my more higher end ones and you know what you can build up with these you can just kind of blend and layer and blend and layer which I absolutely love and I've created some gorgeous looks with this. I do absolutely love it and would definitely recommend it. So the setting spray I've been loving at the moment is the Revolution Hyaluronic Fix Setting Spray. I don't think this like makes you look glowy. It doesn't have like a glitter spray either, which I feel like Hyaluronic Fix and the idea is it's supposed to be hydrating. I find like a lot of hydrating ones can be a little glittery and no one wants to be spraying glitter directly onto their face. You do not have that. It doesn't make you any extra glowy to me. It just melts your makeup together really well and that's what I like. I feel like I don't always want to change how my base is looking. So if you're looking for a glowy setting spray, this isn't it. It's not gonna make you more matte either. It just melts your makeup together. Um, I think there is MAC Fix Plus, which is a higher end one. Now that will give you a bit more of a glow on top. If you just want to melt your makeup together, which I think is the basic need for most setting sprays, if you're just getting into makeup, you don't know how you want to be matte, glowy, you change your mind, this is fantastic for just giving you that melted base, which a lot of us want. So my favourite, favourite, favourite liquid lipstick formula, I don't even have to tell you guys, is affordable. It's the Maybelline Superstay Liquid Lips. The like the label has come off of these. I've used them so much. My favorite shade is Ruler. That's what I've got on my lips today. But I thought I would also include Seductress because I feel like Seductress is a shade that most people are going to prefer over Ruler because Ruler is a little bit bright. So this is Seductress here. It is just so pretty and so nude. And I think it would suit most skin tones. There are lots and lots of other skin tones if you prefer like a bit more of like a brownie nude than a pinky nude, which is what this is. There are lots of options, there are lots of colours if you want like a lilac lip, I'm pretty sure there's a lilac kind of lip going on there. There's lots of colours, lots of options. This, this formula lasts all day, I occasionally have to top it up, but I find that you can get a really, really neat line. I absolutely love this product, it is probably my favourite product that I can recommend to you guys out of the entire drugstore starter kit. Well, I hope you guys actually enjoyed that, that was everything that... I would say is great for a starter kit. I think having a couple of options for a few things like lipsticks is the best bet if you're gonna go for like multiple of something, lipsticks. Lipsticks change up an entire look. With an eyeshadow palette, you can create multiple looks from that, but a few lipsticks, find a formula you like, get a couple of shades of that and you are like good to go. That to me is a perfect starter kit for most people. And I think having it affordable, like if you're just getting into makeup, no one wants to be spending 30, 40 quid on a product that you're not, not going to know that you like. You don't know what you like yet. Do you know what I'm saying? So I think that it's a fantastic way to get into makeup. But if you love any of the products like I did, then please let me know down below if you have any suggestions for like a drugstore starter kit or any products that you think I'm going to love and should be added, then please also let me know down below. And if you like this video, then please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel before you leave. And if you press that notification bell, you'll be notified every time I upload. Thank you for watching.